Okay, shalom, shalom, kwam ya sha'ala. Koholo yim la yi hawa ba shim ya wa sha'i ba ha-shim. Rekaha hudash, double honors to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. That by the Spirit taught us this beautiful truth and just want to say the water to all the Akim and Akwa. That's out here sincerely keeping the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Ba Shem Yahweh Shai to the best of their ability. Shachanan Nawa. Just coming at you with another quick, quick lesson. Pray that it's edifying by the Spirit. And um, this is for educational purposes only. You know, I'm just using this video just to just educate, um, not getting any monetary value off of it. And this is um, from Sakari Riverside. I'm not, you know, exactly sure how they might get down about their videos, but you know, hey. Just a, a, a disclaimer. Um, now, this video is called Jesus Didn't Come for Everybody. Mexican Sisters Get Edified, Part 1. So now, you know, I, I looked at it. And as you get towards the end, because this, this, see, this is the so-called Mexican lady right here to the right. They're trying to edify her and let her know that she's an Israelite. Then you have the so-called white woman right here, which is her friend, basically. You know, she's, you know, jumping in with the scriptures. She's trying to you know, justify white people and justify the Gentiles and all these different things. One thing, you know what I'm saying, that kind of stood out, um, the brother, he went off into, you know, he was asking her, you know, she, she went off into like, what's love? I mean, um, you know, love your brother, love your neighbors, love this, love that, all this other stuff, you know, Jesus loves, God loves and all that other stuff. So the brother asked her, you know, um, what is love? You know what I'm saying? So this is where the point that we're at. And then once he gets off into the point of what is love, you know, she goes off into that thing, you know what I'm saying, that Christians normally say. But once he went into that particular scripture that explained love, you know, keeping the commandments, then, you know, they was kind of, you know, uh, you know, kind of, they was listening, you know, but he asked her, you know, since he went into the commandments, he asked her, he asked them both, do you eat pork? And the so-called... Mexican woman, she was like, oh, I love pork. <laughs> but she's a Christian, though. You know what I'm saying? So, and, and like, I, and they was praying. She was praying. She was like, oh, can I pray for y'all? The so-called Mexican woman, she's praying. And the so-called white woman, she's praying with that babbling and tongue crap and all that other stuff. And I don't know why the brothers didn't just stop that shit. Because I would have just said, no, we don't need no prayers in the name of white Jesus. We don't believe in white Jesus. But they let them go ahead and continue on with it. Anyway, that's not what I wanted to get into. But... I wanted to get into the, the point where she, the so-called white woman, she tried to use the Cornelius um, aspect of Acts in the book of Acts where you can just eat whatever you want to eat. She tried to use that. And that's what I wanted to touch on today with this particular lesson. Because if you're new to this truth, you have to know that, um, you know, come out of that Christianity mindset. Because we keep the law, statutes, and commandments to the best of our ability. And one of those things is, is... To not eat pork, shrimp, crab, lobster. Hey, if it's coming out of the waters, the scripture clearly says that it must have fins and scales on it. it, it it's got to be fish with fins and scales on it. He didn't say that you can eat no damn octopus. He didn't say that you can eat no whale, no shark, no sea lion. You know, just, you know, a bunch of weirdness, man. Damn jellyfish. No damn crabs, crawfish. You're not supposed to be eating those things. But this lady tried to use that. And we hear it all the time from these Christians, man. Trying to use that 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 particular scripture with Cornelius that you can eat anything that you want to eat, man. The, the Lord, he blessed it. But that lets you know that these Christians don't understand the scriptures. They're not reading the scriptures. And, and overall, the Lord is not dealing with them. The Holy Spirit is not dealing with them. That's why they don't get it. They don't get it because the Holy Spirit is not dealing with them. You see what I'm saying? And especially not this so-called white woman. They, they, they're not going to get it. They're just not going to get it. <laughs> but... I got it pretty much queued up here, so let's see where we at, right? No matter what color, race, where, where we come from, just love. Because he said that you would know my people because they would like to, the disciples would love each other, regardless each other. to what? Each other. Exactly. Each, each other. other. Each other. Each other. Each other. Hey, my neighbor, I don't know, is my brother. Quick question. You're my brother. Quick question. You believe in Jesus Christ and you're a brother in Christ. So you let your brothers. I have a question. What is, what is, what is, what is love? Yeah. What is love? That's what love is? Yeah is complete love. All right. Let's get the book of 1 John chapter 5. We're going to go! I'm about to show you what love is right, according, to, according the to the Bible. Now you say love is Yah, right? Before you get into it, how do we show love? By honoring, respecting, giving, when we all need 
each other, whether you're hungry, we feed you. Um, and in every way we can do to give you, to help you, that's love. And we'll see the board. Sometimes showing the truth, which is not always good. Right. What's love to you? Right. No, that's what I'm saying. Love. If I have a child, I'm going to go out there and grab him, bring him back in, because he's going to run out the middle of the street, right? Right. So these are it's not always about feeling good. But what she's saying is that we love one another, right? Right. Yeah. right. I, like, I like something you say. You say when your child runs in the middle of the street, you bring them back, right? I'm going to show you something. Go ahead and bring that out. This is what love is according to the Bible. Thus saith the Lord. Go ahead. Go. This is the book of 1 John chapter 5 and verse 3. Bring it out. For this is the love of God. For this is the love of God. Go ahead. That we keep his commandments. Right. And his commandments are not grievous. Right. Get verse 2. Verse 2. By this we know that we love the children of God. And this is how we know when we love the children of God. Go ahead. When we love God and keep his commandments. All right. When we love God and keep his commandments. So how do we love God? When we keep his commandments, right? And when we do that, when we're keeping the commandments, we're loving our people. Right. Now watch this. What commandments do we have to keep? Love him first. But see, watch this. That is a commandment, right? But what is love? Yeah, so Hold on, real, real quick. I want to. I want to make. I want to make sure that we're following this, right? Yeah, but love what did is it? Not real, always real quick, real quick. What did it just say? Love is. What did it just say in here? What love is? Well, Read it again. Start from verse two. The command. This is the book yes. of First John. Yeah, I didn't say it. I don't know how to say it. Believe me. That part. Read it one more time. <laughs> Go ahead. This is the book of First John, chapter five, and verse two. Read it up. By this we know that we love the children of God. When we love God and keep his commandments. When we love God and keep his commandments. You know where to find the commandments? You find the commandments in the first five books of the Bible. The right. Torah. The instructions. You see what I'm saying? That's where you find the Lord's law, statutes, and commandments. Right? Let me ask you a question. Do you eat pork? Um, I haven't in a while. You haven't in a while? Uh, but I've had eaten it. Yes, I have Okay, what about you, CJ? Do you eat pork? You love no. whoever you got. Yes. I just right, that part. Yes. Yes. This is this <laughs> Let's get it. Let's get Leviticus 11. We're going to show you some laws, statutes, right. and commandments. Right? And oh, 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 oh. Yeah, but you know what? There's a part in there too about John, uh, what the disciples talking about. You shouldn't worry what they eat. It's not what goes into the mouth. It's the files. I was talking about what Get Leviticus 19. So see how she's trying to justify. See, and, and and what she's talking about is is Cornelius. So let's go, let's let's get that real quick. Right? Let's get that. It's going to I'm pretty much here already. Um Acts chapter. Right? I'm just waiting kind of let's see here. Kind of froze up on me here. Okay. Now a clear cut to what she's talking about is the very first part of, 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 of Acts chapter 10, all the way through. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Because once you get on down, further down into the, uh, you know, this particular chapter, it's going to let you know what it's talking about. That this was a, a, a dream that, you know, or, or, or vision that Peter was having, you know what I'm saying? And it was pretty much a similar to, so to speak. Because the scriptures talks about, you know, it, the scripture goes into metaphors, similitudes, you know, um, um, dark sayings, think parables, you know what I'm saying? So everything you can't just take literally. Now, let's start from the top here. It says, Cornelius' vision. There was a certain man of Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. And, 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 and Cornelius was an Israelite. You know, that, I'm not going to do that right now because, it, you know, it's a lot of scriptures to go into to break that down, but Cornelius was an Israelite, you know what I'm saying, and, and but you have to have the spirit of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai dealing with you first off, you know, understanding, and, 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 and going into the precepts, the scriptures talks about going precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, and there a little, you know what I'm saying, so, but that's another lesson, let's get to the point, we just want to prove that the Lord is not talking about food here, man. Okay, verse 2, it says, a devout man. That's how we know he was an Israelite. Because these damn heathens are not devout. They're not God-fearing people, man. And one that feareth Yahweh 
with all his house. So his whole house believed in Yahweh, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day an angel of Yahweh coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before Yahweh. And now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. He lodges with, a, um, he lodges with one Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou ought to do, oughtest to do. And when the angel which spake unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his servants, his household servants, and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. And when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. Okay, so now let's get to Peter's part, right? Verse 9, on the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour, right? And he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance, right? Okay. So now we already got the context that Cornelius, the centurion, is sending men to Peter, right? So that's that's a portion of the context right here that Cornelius, you, you're about to see it. Let's let's just continue on reading because Peter, of course, you're seeing that he's hungry, right? He, he he's on the on the housetop around the sixth hour praying, and saw heaven open. Verse eleven, and saw heaven open. And a certain vessel descending unto him, as it had been a great sheet, knit at the four corners and let down to the earth, wherein were all manners of all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. Right? And the NLT over here says, And the sheep were all sorts of animals, reptiles, and birds. Okay, so now check it out. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. So keep that, that, that phrase in mind, common or unclean, right? And the NLT over here says, Then a voice said to him, Get up, Peter, kill and eat them. No, Lord, Peter declared, I have never eaten anything that our Jewish laws have declared impure or unclean. Let's get this. Let me see what they got for this right here. Oh, it's a lock. Yeah, this boy is moving. I don't know why. He got a little frozen up on me here. Uh, anyway, I'm not sure what's going on here, but let's move on. Um, verse 15. And the voice spake unto him again uh, the second time, What Yahweh hath cleansed, that called not thou common so this is where you know you have these christians this is where they get that mindset that you can just eat anything see they take everything for just face value instead of reading they don't go into the precepts of it sometimes you could just read the chapter or read a few a, a, a verse ahead or a verse beyond the verse that you're at you know so i do i try and do a few you know or if, if i'm not understanding it, i kind of scroll to the top of the the very um chapter you know and, and, and sometimes you'll get a title and it'll give you exactly what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Context wise. But you have to have context, man. But see, this is where they, they get that from. They take, you know, verses like this and they'll use it and say, see, you can eat anything. You're not supposed to call anything common or unclean. Right. You see, <laughs> but, but, but we're not heathens, man. The Lord gave us law, statutes, and commandments, man. We're not to eat just any old thing because the Lord changed not. The scripture says the Lord changed not. So why would he go from giving you a dietary law in the very first, um, in, in the Tanakh, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 you know, under, you know, the laws that Moses gave to the children of Israel. Why would he go from that to now in the New Testament? He's going to give you things that can give you high blood pressure, hypertension, diabetes, and all these different things, man. You see? Okay, so verse 17, it says, Now why Peter doubted in himself, because Peter was, was perplexed by this. He like, what the hell? You know what I'm saying? You know? It says, Now while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean, because he didn't know. 
Because he knew for a fact that he didn't eat nothing un uncommon or unclean. He knew that. <laughs> he didn't, you know, he kind of, he trying to, he's brain picking now. Like, well, damn, what, what, what's going on here, Lord? It says, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate and called and asked whether Simon, which were surnamed Peter, were lodged there. While Peter thought on the vision, see, Peter's still thinking on his vision. The spirit said unto him, behold, three men seek thee. So he's still puzzled about this vision, right? Arise, therefore, and get thee down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. So the Lord is saying, hey, hey you don't doubt nothing, man. Holy Spirit is telling me, don't doubt nothing. Go with them. Then Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius and said, Behold, I am he whom ye seek. What is the cause wherefore ye are come? And they said, Cornelius, the centurion, a just man, and one that feared God, and of a good report among all the nation of the Jews, was warned from God by the holy angel to send for thee into his house, and to hear the words of thee. Then called he them in, and lodged them. And on the, mor on the morrow, Peter went away with them, and certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him, right? So, so these are Israelites that's, that's they like, we're going to wait until in the morning, we're going to dip up, we're going to get everything together, and we're going to bounce. So a few of the Israelites that was with Peter went with him, right? Now, this is Peter at Caesarea, right? So they get there. It says, and the morrow after they entered into Caesarea, and Cornelius waited for them and had called together his kinsmen and near friends. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him. And fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter took him, took him up, saying, Stand up, I myself also am a man. It says, And as he talked with him, he went in. And matter of fact, you know what? Because I was just watching the brother's video. Um, you know, hey, we, we have to be humble in his truth, man. Because we're just men. We're just men that's doing the, the, the work of Yahweh Bashim Shai, man. You know, some brothers get these platforms. They come up and, and, and they got all these followers. And they, you know... And, and I, I, you know, I can name some groups, but you have these men, they're the top, these, these top leaders in some of these, these Israelite camps, and they just get the big ass head, man. They get the big ass head, they get proud, you know, and then it's like they can't be rebuked, they can't take reproof, they're never wrong, all this other stuff, you know what I'm saying, and they have themselves on this pedestal, you know, where, you know, I'm that man, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the shit, so to speak, you know, but hey, we have to be humble in this thing, man. Peter could have, you know, you know, he like, hey, man, so, hey, stand up, man. I'm just a man. So stay humble, man, in this truth, man. Because once you get into that pride thing, that's when things, you know, the Lord start to take things from you, man. You don't want this truth to be taken from you. Okay, so verse 27, it says, And as he talked with them, he went in and found many that were come together. And he said unto them, Ye know how that it is an all lawful thing. For a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. But Yahweh hath showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. There's your answer to the vision. Peter gets it. You know what I'm saying? There, there's your there's your, your answer to the that's why I said to keep that that common or unclean. See, it says, But Yahweh hath showed me that I should not that I should not call any man. Now it's not talking about Damn gorillas and, and 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 monkeys and you know you you out here you know you just living in a damn Chinese village and they just eating cat rat dog and bat. No man, that's not what this that that, that scripture was talking about. But what was this Edomite woman trying to do? She was trying to justify eating pork by using the scriptures, man. Going all the way off, and a lot of our people do that. The so-called blacks. Oh my goodness, man. Hey, they 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 shopping right now. And gonna sit down to Christmas dinner, dinner to 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 celebrate idolatrous sweet white baby Jesus with goddamn ham hocks and the greens, uh 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 you know gonna have shit pork chop sandwiches or some shit like that before the the big ham dinner get done. You see? Okay, so now let's read on. Verse twenty nine. Therefore came I unto you without gain, saying, really I can I can I can stop right there. You know what I'm saying? Because let's, yeah, I just wanted to get that point. Let's go to um, chapter 11 on it, right? Let's start from the top right here. Peter reports at Jerusalem. That's the title here, right? 
where Peter explains his action is the way that they um, have it in the NLT over here. Verse 1, And the apostles and brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of, of God. And like I said, that Gentile thing, that's another lesson because those are Israelites, man. You know, you have to realize that the Israelites were living Gentile, heathenist um, lifestyles. You had Israelites that was living like heathen, man. And that's the reason why you had the circumcision and the uncircumcision. Peter went to the circumcised. Those were Jews that grew up knowing they were Jews. They went to the synagogue every Shabbat. They, was, they kept all the high holy days. But you had Israelites that lived in other parts of, um, of uh, in other nations that was just, they was just living like niggas. Straight American, straight French, wherever you find a nigga at, Jamaican, straight Haitians, you know, those are Israelites, but they live and, and follow the flag and, and uh, the language and the customs of those countries where we was enslaved to. And that's what that's going into. But that's another lesson. All right. So verse two, it says, and when Peter was come up to Jerusalem, they that were of the circumcision contended with him. See, these are the ones that's of the of the circumcision, which was ones that that kept you know the shabbat they kept the you know the feast of high um, um the feast of dedication they kept uh of uh, the passover they was at the um the temple daily those were the circumcised you know what i'm saying and they had a real real grudge against um nasty ass they they looked at the other israelites that that kept the customs of these other nations as nasty ass heathenish gentiles man and they didn't deal with them because if you go into the law um, um, it was certain things where you was cast away from the people, so to speak, man. And you, you weren't to be dealt, dealt with no more. But that's why Yahweh Shai came, which the world eagerly calls Jesus. He came to put the kingdom back together. The Lord came to bring the southern kingdom and northern kingdom, the whole kingdom of Israel. He came for repentance. He came to die for our people to repent. He came to die for our sins. He shed his blood for us that we could all come together, back together to be a nation. Even the barbarians, man. You see what I'm saying? See, that's another lesson, though. It's a lot to that. So I just want to keep it simple and go up into what this lady was talking about as far as, um, you know, um, her trying to use these particular scriptures to say, y'all see, the Lord made everything clean. We can eat anything that we want. Right. OK, so verse three, and I'm pretty much about done with the lesson. I mean, the point is proven. I just wanted to prove it because the, the, the evidence is right there in chapter 10. OK, but it says, um, but Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning and expounded it by order unto them, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying and in a vision. I saw a, a, a vision and in a trance, I saw a vision, Salakia, a certain vessel descend. As it had been a great sheet let down from heaven by the four corners, and it came unto me. Upon the which, when I had fasted mine eyes, I considered I saw four footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. And I heard a voice saying unto me, Arise, Peter, slay and eat. But I said, Not so, Lord, for nothing come, for nothing common. Or unclean hath at any time entered into my mouth. But the voice answered me again from heaven. What God hath has cleansed, let call, that call not thou uncommon. What God has cleansed, that call not thou common. Right? Remember that was in chapter 10 as well. Same thing being repeated. And this was done three times. And all were drawn up again unto heaven. And behold, immediately there were three men already Come into the house where I was, sent from Caesarea unto me, and the Spirit bade me go with them, nothing doubting. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me, and we entered into the man's house. And he showed us how he had seen an angel in his house, which stood and said unto him, Send men to Joppa, Salakia, and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter, who shall tell thee words, thereby thou and all thy house shall be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on, on them as on as on us at the beginning. So he's telling them, hey, look, these these people, you know what I'm saying? You know, these 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 Gentile Israelites, because that's what they were. Hey, look, they, the Holy Spirit fell on them just like how it fell on us. Right. Then remembered I the word of the Lord, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water. 
but ye shall baptize with the Holy Ghost. For as much then as gave, as, as God gave them the, the gift as he did unto us, who believed on the Lord Yahweh Shammashiach, what was I that I could withstand Yahweh? When they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God, saying, Then hath God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. See? And when you go into that word Gentile and you look it up, you'll see that it was Israelites, man. That's why when you go into the book of James, chapter 1, verses 1, you know, he 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 he, he was sending, he was giving greetings to the 12 tribes gathered, um, the 12 tribes scattered abroad. So, Lucky, I'm getting too excited. Let me slow it down a little bit. Okay, but. And that was that was pretty much it right there. You know, I just wanted to just touch on that because. Peter was talking to. He 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 was puzzled by this this vision that he got because he he knew for a fact. Look, man, I ain't ever ate nothing outside of the um, the Jewish traditional law, never. And he even told the Lord, no, <laughs> like uh uh <laughs> uh uh, you know what I'm saying? Now it's not giving um the types of animals that that, but it said all types of four footed beasts, all and wild beasts. And we know that it was against the, the dietary law. He's telling you that himself. But they take that part. Let's go back to um, chapter 10. They, they, they use the words of Yahweh Shai, where he says, verse 15, And the voice spake unto him again the second time, What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. And this was being used as a, a metaphor for the Gentiles, the Israelites, that were just living like damn heathens, man. These niggas, man, I can't even imagine how they must have looked. Tattoos all over them. Them motherfuckers wearing long ass hair and, you know, and some effeminate as hell. And, uh, you know, just living those Greek customs, man. And when you go to the Apocrypha, that's the reason why they took the Apocrypha out of the scriptures, man. But if you got a 1611 King James Bible, you go into the Apocrypha, the history is there as to... How the Israelites went off into um, living um, after those Greek customs, man. But that, like I said, again, that's another lesson. I didn't want to keep it long. But the point that I wanted to make when it comes to food, the Lord is not telling you in, these, in this particular scripture right here, in this, this chapter, that you can eat anything, man. This is going into men. That's why he had the vision in Cornelius you know, sent those men to Peter because the Lord wanted to let Cornelius know and he wanted to let, and more importantly, the Israelites know, hey, look, man, I'm about to put the whole kingdom back together. That's the reason why Yahweh Shai came, man. He he spoke of that. Some, matter of fact, let me see if I can find that. Um, he said some that are not of this fold. Because the disciples, they didn't really understand everything that was going on, man. Let me get this real quick. Let's go off into this. Let me start at verse 15. John 10 and 15. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, see, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring. And they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd, because the Lord is going to bring the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom back together as one. Matter of fact, that's why we have the signs out on the highways and byways, that he's going to bring them back together as one stick. The Lord is going to bring the kingdom back together. It's not going to be southern kingdom Judah and the northern kingdom Israel anymore. He's going after, because you have to realize our people had been in captivity for a really, really long time. Just as long as hell we've been in captivity in the Americas. By the time the Lord came on the scene, a lot of those people didn't even know that they were Israelites. Some of them did, though. But they was living, you know, in, in other, um, other countries. So that's why the disciples was doing these journeys. When you look at these, um, you know, um, the scriptures, and they go up into these maps, 
You know, like you might have a Bible where it's got maps in it and it'll give you the the um the journey that Paul's went on, you know, and Peter, you know, it'll give you a map and it'll show you how they went all, over all these places. Man, hey, they covered a lot of land mass, man, going to these synagogues back and forth, man, to um to um teach and preach to the um the children of Israel, man. And and Paul had the the job of going and teaching the Gentiles. The, the the Hebrew Israelites that spoke other languages and lived like the other heathen Latin, um, nations, that's who Paul was sent to. Peter was sent to the ones that already but already were into you know the Jewish lifestyle. They were already keeping the customs of the of the law. They was all you know going to the synagogues on a regular basis. They was keeping the Passover. They was keeping you know they they was into they were still sacrificing animals at the you know in the temple so to speak, man. You see, so that's who Peter was sent to. And Paul was sent to the, the I would say, more of the northern kingdom. Or he was sent to, because there was, there was um, 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 you know, I mean, just of all Israel, there were Israelites that were living like heathens and living like Gentiles. And again, a lot of them didn't know who they were. Some did know who they were. And, and that's the case, man. It's that simple. I didn't want to keep the lesson long, though, but I wanted to go into the fact of this food thing. Don't get a, don't listen to these damn Christians, because Christians want to just be greedy as hell and, and come up and, and lying on the lord man to eat that shit just go ahead and eat it man you know they they better off just saying you know yeah i know it's not you know i'm not supposed it, it's in the bible that i'm not supposed to eat it but they try and use the lord the, the lord's word to justify eating that trash man so with that i pray that the lesson was edifying come